All right, so here we are. Yes, here's, wow, that's so amazing. The, the attending of so many from the US and Canada. That's thank you, wonderful. Even though it's really in the night or in the early morning. That's so great. Thank you for passing by, for attending, for being here, being present, whether you lay in your bed, whether you are so sleepy or so tired or so this or so that you you did make it and you're here. Um, that's great. I like it. So I just wanted to play another song, but we'll do that later. It's an uh, Estonian lullaby that is so sweet that I love to tell you that. But maybe I should do that at the end so that you can say, drift back into sleep <laughs> if you if you need to. And otherwise you get so excited about the beauty that you will stay awake. That's also a possibility. So today, uh, the miracle work on this 23rd day of the yeah, yes. On the 23rd day, or the 24th. Wait, let me check it first quickly. Oh, 24th day. Oh my God. So the 24th day of the 40 day resurrection in progress. I'm happy that you're here, that you decided to join this meeting. That is so great. So um, there's some active participation being asked of you today. So yeah, if you don't want to participate in that because of your the way that you attend today, let's say that, uh, that's fine, of course. Uh, if you want to participate and read with me, that is also very lovely. Um, because we're going to take a look at the review lessons, but not the 1 to 50 from A Course in Miracles, but the 60 to 70. Yeah, I think it's about that, 60 to 80. So they're not that we do all of them, but we do some of them and then take another look at it. So that's where you're being invited to. And we're going to start. I will start reading the introduction to the review lessons. So so what's the what's the occasion with the striped shirt today? Well, I didn't tell you that yet. So waking up, um, getting to breakfast, discovering that my household, so to speak, uh, we all were wearing a striped shirt and we never wear striped shirts, but just for today we do. I don't know why it just happened. It was so funny. So there's only one of us. That's obvious. Um, so here's the review. Introduction, the review to lessons. We are now ready for another review. <coughs> Sorry. We begin where we where our last review left off and cover two ideas each day. The earlier part of the day will be devoted to one of these ideas and the latter part of the day to the other. We will have one longer exercise period and frequent shorter ones in which we practice each of them. The longer practice periods will follow this general form Take about 15 minutes for each of them and begin by thinking about the idea and the comments which are included in the assignments. Devote about three to four minutes to reading them over slowly several times if you wish and then close your eyes and listen. Repeat the first phase if you find your mind wandering but try to spend the major part of the practice period listening quietly but attentively. There's a message waiting for you. Be confident that you will receive it. Remember that it belongs to you and that you want it. Do not allow your intent to waver in the face of distracting thoughts. Realize that Whatever form they take, they have no meaning and no power. I'll repeat that once more. Realize that whatever form they take, they have no meaning and no power. Replace them with your determination to succeed. 
Do not forget that your will has power over fantasies and dreams. Trust it to see you through and carry you beyond them all. Regard these practice periods as dedications to the way, the truth and the life. Refuse to be sidetracked into detours, illusions and thoughts of death. You are dedicated to salvation. Be determined each day not to leave your function unfulfilled. Wow. Do not forget, I will repeat that once more because that's useful information, right? Do not forget that your will has power over fantasies and dreams. Trust it to see you through and carry you beyond them all. Beyond all your fantasies and dreams. Regard these practice periods as dedications to the way, the truth and the life. Refuse to be sidetracked into detours, illusions and thoughts of death. You are dedicated to salvation. Be determined each day not to leave your function unfulfilled. Uh, so that's the introduction to, to the um, review lessons. So this is great instruction. So I'm not going to say too much about that because it speaks for itself. The only thing that I want to ask you, live in class here, what I want to ask you is to, it's like we have a succession of you read two lessons slowly in your tempo like in your the way that you can read them and still be fully in contact with what you read it's like take your time to express the words so that they make sense to you while you read them take all your time if you need to repeat a sentence repeat the sentence if you you know like this it's like with full attention like literally this is your mana this is your food you're going to eat it um, in the way that you can eat it so don't go too quick oh here's another sorry here's another part and that is this reaffirm your determination in the shorter practice periods as well and using the original form of the idea for general application and the more speci uh, specific form when needed. Some specific form will be included in the comments. These, however, are merely suggestions. It is not particular the particular word you use that matters. How holy am I? We have been given the function of lighting up the world. Let me be still before my holiness. In its calm light, let all my conflicts disappear. In its peace, let me remember who I am. Some specific forms for applying the idea specific difficulty seem to arise might be. Let me not obscure the light of the world in me. Let the light of the world shine through this appearance. The shadow will vanish before the light. Forgiveness in my function as the light of the world. It's through accepting my function that I will see the light in me. And in this light will my function stand clear and perfectly unambiguous before my sight. My acceptance does not depend on my recognizing what my function is, for I do not yet understand forgiveness. Yet I will trust that in the light, I will see it as it is. Specific forms for using the idea might include, let this help me learn what forgiveness means. Let me not separate my function from my role. I would not use this for an alien purpose. It's an 82. The light of the world brings peace to every mind through my forgiveness. My forgiveness is the means by which the light of the world finds expression through me. My forgiveness is the means by which I become aware of the light of the world in me. My forgiveness is the means by which the world is healed together with myself. 
Let me then forgive the world that it may be healed along with me. Suggestions for specific forms for applying this idea are, let peace extend from my mind to yours name. I share the light of the world with you, name. Through my forgiveness, I can see this as it is. Let me not forget my function. I would not forget my function because I would remember myself. I cannot fulfill my function by forgetting. And unless I fulfill my function, I will not experience the joy that God intends for me. Suitable specific forms of this idea include, let me not use this to hide my function from me. I would use this as an opportunity to fulfill my function. This may threaten my ego, but I cannot change my function in any way. So this is today's lesson, I think, the lesson 83. I will read it. My only function is the one God gave me. I have no function but the one God gave me. This recognition releases me from all conflict because it means I cannot have conflicting goals. With one purpose only, I am always certain what to do what to say and what to, to think. All doubt must disappear and I acknowledge that my only function is the one God gave me. More specific applications of this idea might take this form, these forms. My perception of this does not change my function. This does not give me a function other than the one God gave me. Let me not use this to justify a function God did not give to me. My happiness and my function are one. All things that come from God are one. They come from oneness and must be received as one. Fulfilling my function is my happiness because both come from the same source. And I must learn to recognize what makes me happy if I would find happiness. Some useful forms for specific applications of this idea are This cannot separate my happiness from my function. The oneness of my happiness and my function remains wholly unaffected by this. Nothing, including this, can justify the illusion of happiness apart from my function. Love created me like itself. I am in the likeness of my creator. I cannot suffer. I cannot experience loss. And I cannot die. I am not a body. I would reopen. Recognize my reality today. I will worship no idols, nor raise my own self-concepts to replace myself. I am in the likeness of my creator. Love created me like itself. You might find these specific forms helpful in applying the idea. Let me not see an illusion of myself in this. As I look on this, let me remember my creator. My creator did not create this as I see it. Love holds no grievances. Grievances are completely alien to love. Grievances attack love and keep, it, keep its light obscure. If I hold grievances, I am attacking love and therefore attacking myself. Myself thus becomes alien to me. I am determined not to attack myself today so that I can remember who I am. These specific forms for applying this idea 
would be helpful. This is no justification for denying myself. I will not use this to attack love. Let this not tempt me to attack myself. My grievances hide the light of the world in me. My grievances show me what is not there and hide from me what I would see. Recognizing this, what do I want my grievances for? They keep me in darkness and hide the light. Grievances and light cannot go together, but light and vision must be joined for me to see. You see, I must lay grievances aside. I want to see, and this will be means by which I will succeed. Specific applications of the idea might be made in these forms. Let me not use this as a block to sight. The light of the world will shine all this way. I have no need for this. I want to see. My salvation comes from me. Today, I will recognize where my salvation is. It is in me because its source is there. It has not left its source and so it cannot have left my mind. I will not look for it outside myself. It is not found outside and then brought in. But from within me, it will reach beyond and everything I see will be and everything I see will be will but reflect the light that shines in me and in itself. These forms of the idea are suitable for some for more specific application. Let this not tempt me to look away from me for my salvation. I will not let this interfere with my awareness of the source of my salvation. This, hell, this has no power to remove salvation from me. Thank okay. you. These ideas, lesson 86, these ideas are for review today. Only God's plan for salvation will work. It is senseless for me to search wildly for salvation. I have seen it in many people and in many things. But when I reached for it, it was not there. I was mistaken about where it is. I was mistaken about what it is. I will undertake no more idle seeking. Only God's plan for salvation will work. And I rejoice because his plan can never fail. These are some suggested forms for applying this idea specifically. God's plan for salvation will save me from my perception of this. This is no exception in God's plan for my salvation. Let me perceive this only in the light of God's plan for salvation. Uh, holding grievances is an attack on God's plan for salvation. Holding grievances is an attempt to prove that God's plan for salvation will not work. Yet, only his plan will work. By holding grievances, I am therefore excluding my own only hope for salvation from my awareness. I would no longer defeat my own best interests in this insane way. I would accept God's plan for salvation and be happy. Specific applications of this idea might be in these forms. I am choosing between misperception and salvation as I look on this. If I see grounds for grievances in this, I will not see the grounds for my salvation. This calls for salvation, not attack. I will there be light. <laughs> I will there be light. 
I will use the power of my will today. It is not my will to grope about in darkness, fearful of shadows and afraid of things unseen and unreal. Light shall be my guide today. I will follow it where it leads me and I will look on only what it shows me. This day I will experience the peace of true perception. These forms of this idea would be helpful for specific applications. I'm spraying all over my <laughs> telephone. This cannot hide the light I will to see. You stand with me in light. Tanya, <laughs> in the light, this will look different. There is no will but God's. I am safe today because there is no will but God's. I can become afraid only when I believe that there is another will. I try to attack only when I am afraid. And only when I try to attack can I believe that my eternal safety is threatened. Today I will recognize that all this has not occurred. I am safe. <laughs> Sorry. No, great. I am safe because <laughs> Yeah. I am safe because there is no will but God. <laughs> These are some useful forms of this idea for specific applications. Let me perceive this in accordance with the will of God. It is God's will you <laughs> It is God's will. You are his son, daughter, and mine as well. This is part of God's will for me, however I may see it. The light has come. In choosing salvation rather than attack, I merely choose to recognize what is already there. Salvation is a decision made already. Attack and grievances are not there to choose. That's why I always choose between truth and delusion, between what is there and what is not. The light has come. It can but choose the light, for it has no alternative. It has replaced the darkness, and the darkness is gone. These would prove useful forms for specific applications of this idea. This cannot show me darkness, for the light has come. The light in you is all that I would see, dear one. I would see in this only what is there. I'm under no laws but God's. Here is the perfect statement of my freedom. I'm under no laws but God's. I'm constantly tempted to make up other laws and give them power over me. I suffer only of my belief in them. They have no real effect on me at all. I am perfectly free of the effect of all laws save God's. And his are the laws of freedom. For specific forms in applying this idea, these would be useful. My perception of this shows me I believe in laws which do not exist. I see only the laws of God at work in this. Let me allow God's laws to work in this and not my own. 
I am entitled to miracles. I'm entitled to miracles because I'm under no laws but God's. His laws release me from all grievances and replace them with miracles. I would accept the miracles in place of the grievances, which are but illusions that hide the miracles beyond. Now, I would accept only what the laws of God entitle me to have, that I may use it on behalf of the function he has given me. You might use these suggestions for specific applications of this idea. Behind this is a miracle to which I am entitled. Let me not hold a grievance against you, dear one, but offer you the miracle that belongs to you instead. Seem true, you, this offers me a miracle. Let miracles replace all grievances. By this idea do I unite my will with the Holy Spirit's and perceive them as one. By this idea do I accept my release from hell. By this idea do I express my willingness to have all my illusions be replaced with truth according to God's plan for my salvation. I would make no exceptions and no substitutes. I want all of heaven and only heaven as, God's will, as God wills me to have. Useful specific forms for applying this idea would be, I would not hold this grievance apart from my salvation. Let our grievances be replaced by miracles. Beyond this is the miracle by which all grievances are replaced. It may recognize the problem so it can be solved. Let me realize today that the problem is always some form of grievance which I wish to cherish. Let me also understand that the solution is always a miracle with which I let the grievance be replaced. Today I remember the simplicity of salvation by reinforcing the lesson that there is one problem and one solution. The problem is a grievance, the solution is a miracle. And I invite the solution to come to me through my forgiveness of the grievance and my welcome of the miracle which takes its place. Specific applications of this idea might be in these forms. This presents a problem to me which I would have resolved. The miracle behind this grievance will resolve it for me. The answer to this problem is the miracle which it conceals. Let me recognize my problems have been solved. Let me recognize my problems have been solved. I seem to have problems only because I'm just misusing time. I believe that the problem comes first and time must elapse before it can be worked out. I do not see the problem and the answer is simultaneous in their, in their occurrence. That is because I do not yet realize that God has placed the answer together with the problem so that they cannot be separated by time. That is because I do not yet realize that God has placed the answer together with the problem so they cannot be separated by time. The Holy Spirit will teach me this if I will let him. And I will understand it is impossible that I could have a problem which has not been solved already. These forms of the idea will be useful for specific applications. I need not wait for this to be resolved. The answer to this problem is already given me if I will accept it. Time cannot separate this problem from its solution. All right, thank you so much for uh, reading this with me. So you see how, how great this is to read it. Like everything is in there, <laughs> even though it's a review. It's like, wow, everything is in there. Amazing. 
So thank you for doing that, for reading that. And it's, it's always an invitation for an occurrence to you, like a happening, a moment of healing, a moment of recognition. You know, that's so beautiful. So, so I'm happy that, you, that, you, that we did this together. Thank you. Um, you see, too, that this was the preparation, in fact, to step into lesson 91, 92 and 93, the, the light lessons that we did um, some time ago. So these are actually the follow-up from all this review. And there's a systematic way in which everything is presented in A Course in Miracles, especially with the lessons. So it would be great to watch these again. And to um, so because you will see them differently now too, going through this process of uh, reviewing, entering every aspect of the lesson, you enter deeply into the experience of it, because the the practical application is literally given to you, like in these situations. Stay with one idea that you take with you during the day, and bring that back into your uh, awareness and use that in, in situations where you feel, oh my God, what am I doing now? Or um, uh, there's a conflict here, what, what, what goes, yeah, what's, what did happen? So then always there's a, a possibility to, to stand still instead of um, running forward, missing the opportunity to heal. That's what this is for. It's like it's slowing you down so immensely, in fact, that you start to see what is happening in the moment. I perceive a problem. Instead of running away from it and making time, just like we, um, just like we read a moment ago, instead of making up time and thinking, well, there will be a solution sometime, you actually stand still and, and drop the whole thing uh, into this moment and see that the problem is already solved. Well, that takes a lot of your head, right? That takes a lot of your shoulders too. It's like you don't have to carry that problem with you anymore. Um, because you, you saw, you experienced the miracle instead of the holding on to the ideas, making time real, uh, trying to solve it, and seeing that that doesn't work, and coming back to the same place where you ended up. Like, so this is collapsing time, as we call it. It's like this is real quantum thinking that we do. In fact, in this, in this specifically in this lesson, as a preparation for you to come into your light recognition seeing that none of this was so, all the facts that you believed, all the reasons you saw to attack and to, um, and, and to misuse time um, are gone. The reasons for that are gone, are dissolving literally. They, ha get, they have no chance to grasp its hold in your mind. Just by you taking time, instead of running fast, you stand still. And like it is solved right here. It is, it is not going to be solved in the future. Now it's right now. Here's the solution. I'm waiting for the solution to come to me and I'm not going to do anything else with it. And this, this is the miracle work that we're talking about. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's so clear and so beautiful. So it's like the problem comes with the solution. Like, you can't have one without the other. So if if you have a problem, there's always a solution, right? D to belong together. Well, that's good to know. All right, thank you so much for participating in this uh, short review of the 80s lessons. Thank you, 60s, 70s lessons. Thank you so much.
Thank you.